Nepal as the destination was also a you know wow destination. You know, a vision and a mission how we get there, I think is more important. Well, I think uh, that's a million dollar or even a billion dollar question. That some destinations don't even need any international uh, you know travelers. Hello and welcome to nepaltraveler.com. Once again, we are back with Nepal Travel Trade Talk. And today we are joined by a very seasoned veteran hospitality person who's worked in the industry, who's uh, contributed immensely. He's been through some of the most challenging times from the uh, earthquake to COVID. And now he's the general manager at the Terraces Resort. He was the launch general manager and He's taking things with his experience and trying to get the property at a different level. Welcome to our show, Suman. Thank you, Darren. Much obliged for having me here. So to start with, Suman, maybe for our audiences, just a short recap, your journey in tourism and maybe to start with why tourism? Okay, I mean, I think, uh, yes, we were just having a quick chat before this about how, you know, time frames kind of uh, evolve. So for me, it's been what, uh, uh, nearly two, two decades plus uh, in the industry. I started off uh, uh, in 2000, uh, that time the Hyatt Regency Kathmandu had just opened up. Uh, so it was a journey where, you know, it's, it, it, it has had its, uh, you know, ups and downs. Uh, like you say, said earlier, you know, Nepal as a destination, you know, we went through the insurgency, then you had, uh, you know, issues like the Royal Family Massacre, then, you know, we had a lot of political upheaval. So from a tourism perspective, I think we did have a lot of, uh, you know, ups and downs uh, in the process. And it's been a learning experience over the years. So I, I would say, you know, it has made me a better person, uh, a better kind of business uh, personality if it may uh, to understand what it is all about and I think end of the day we've all become better crisis managers if I can put it that way. So going back to what put you into tourism why did you get into tourism why why the choice tourism? Well oh. uh, to be very frank I mean uh, you know uh, I had just finished doing my master's uh, I actually I did my master's in uh, business administration in marketing so hospitality was really not my forte or uh, kind of thing that as I aspired for. But uh, since I was out of Nepal, uh, you know, for my studies and, you know, I, I thought, you know, why not come back home? You know, family's there. Also, you know, you would want to, you know, in that zeal of that moment, you know, you think, OK, let, let me go back to my own country, do something, you know, contribute in, in any way possible. And Having come back, you know, um, the hydrangea had just uh, opened. Okay. So, you know, it was an international chain hotel. So I was more into marketing as an experience. So I kind of joined in uh, as a public relations officer and then moved on. So um, that was my kind of start of the journey. Uh, nothing, it was more of chance than I would say by choice. That's how it all started. Yes. And you stayed with the Hyatt relatively for a long period compared to other hospitality experts because the hospitality industry does always movement uh, something about that on your comments and what what kept you so long there yeah i mean i if you look at it i was with the high drinks government for nearly 21 years uh, and it was a journey that was i think like i said earlier with its ups and downs so with the various international uh, you know like internal factors external factors that nepal went through uh, I guess the reason for me staying was also uh, because it was a new experience moving ahead. 
uh, you know, I was given as I as I progressed into different roles, you know, I was given the opportunity to experience what it was all about in hospitality. And of course, being a chain hotel, you know, you had the advantage of, you know, the scope of work being kind of aligned and, you know, it was very much a learning experience. Let me put it that way. I mean, I do owe it to the chain to, you know, to be where I am today because, you know, there was a lot of learning in that process. And the Hyatt was probably one of the first international chains in Nepal. I mean, today, if you look at the market, there's so many yes, of them. Yes, I think uh, before we opened in 2000, uh, I mean, uh, I, I still say we. So when it opened in 2000, uh, we had, I think, uh, just another few more uh, chains that was there in the market. Uh, I think it was the Radisson, Radisson. then you had the Crown Plaza, uh, the Holiday Inn slash Crown Plaza. And I think that was about it. Not, not many. And today, when you look at the market with so many international chains already in the market, as well as others almost ready to open their doors, uh, how do you see the difference? Well, I think Nepal as a market has evolved in terms of what uh, we're going through. And I think, uh, yes, there are still the traditional markets that do kind of uh, come back to Nepal and, uh, you know, what we are loved for. Because, yes, we, we do have a lot of natural resource, uh, you know, nature. We do have a lot of people coming in for that in terms of trekking, tours, uh, religious purposes. But I think the evolution has happened, uh, and it, but it's a slow process. But having said that, you know, you still have people looking more for experiential kind of a, uh, products. And I think Nepal has a combination of that to offer, especially post-COVID where, you know, I think there was almost this interest for globally for people to you know go to places where it was more nature it was more kind of related to having more of a wellness aspect and i think that's where it did click to evolve that um, guest profile in, in many ways you also moved out of an international chain to a individually owned boutique kind of hotel would you like to tell us about terraces and how you moved into that? Well, sure. I mean, uh, I think when uh, COVID happened, uh, you know, I think uh, everything became a lot of uh, run of the mill kind of operation. And then, you know, I said, uh, and then uh, the terraces was in the process of opening and it was just opened. So again, it's, it's a very experiential product. Uh, it's a very, uh, when you say luxury again, uh, you know, it, it's very, it has this different connotation. So that's why I would say more of an experiential luxury product where, you know, you have people wanting to go there for be it wellness, be it in terms of a f and experience, be it in terms of, you know, uh, the location where we are right in the middle of a, a forest. So for me, it was a challenge. So I kind of jumped on and said, okay, why not? Because, you know, like I said, 31 years of selling or being associated with something was a platform for me to maybe grow into that uh, as well to kind of see what, what next. You know, you could always raise the bar. You could always kind of, you know, raise the experience level. Uh, so that is how it all happened. And like I said, the Terraces is a small boutique luxury hotel. Uh, we are a 46 key property. We are located on, uh, I would say we are actually geographically, it comes on the Suri Binayak, but then a lot of our access is from Guarco. So you could say from the international airport, we are like 18 kilometers away. I guess one of the closest, uh, you know, viewpoints overlooking Kathmandu Valley when you compare it with the likes of Nagarkot or Durikhel. And yes, it has a very unique experience. And I mean, you've been there. So, you know, I think... Uh, it does allow our guests or anybody visiting kind of, you know, take in that uh, sense of uh, nature, you know, it allows you to kind of almost breathe a notch down. And I think that's what it's a combination of. And as the general manager, as the main man there, uh, how challenging was that? You know, starting a new hotel, getting it off and... Uh... Well, I think as a product, you know, we have a very nice product and I think... Uh, that is also important, you know, of course, the hardware is something that is is there. And, and when you combine that with, of course, 
the software that needs to be developed in terms of human uh, human human resources to you know getting a team ready because end of the day it's it's a team effort you know i i, I think uh, what the terraces is today is all because of okay. what the team has uh, combined has kind of put in and you know kind of put us in a pedestal to kind of grow so yes i think uh, it's it's a combination of how it is yes the challenges are there in terms of location in terms of you know having to look at different angles of uh, being a little away from the city as well it could be sometimes weather induced it could be also location it could be because we're right in the middle of the jungles that you know there are certain challenges which uh, maybe a city hotel might not have but then again there are the advantages as well where you know which is something which is out of the world uniquely which, yours yes, exactly in terms of the hotel now that you've been there i think 2 years or so a little over two and a half years yes what is the feedback that you're getting and uh, how how is the local market per se actually uh, looking at the property well to start off with uh, you know the hotel opened in october of 2021 that was right post covid so a lot of our guess was very much local let's say from nepal it was uh, you know so it was mostly the locals that kind of supported us in our journey uh, to where we are now but moving forward i think with you know international travel opening up and everything uh, you know coming to some sort of a normal sea post covid so we are seeing a shift in terms of international tourists coming in so and i think uh, even if you look at our reviews on google uh, be it on tripadvisor i think you know uh, it it's been very positive i mean to be very frank i mean we've just recently been uh, nominated as traveler's uh, choice award uh, for the last kind of year and also you know our rankings on a lot of uh, otas to you know uh, google okay. has been like right on top like right? so yeah i think uh, end of the day i think it's the guests who kind of has to kind of really appreciate you and i think what we've delivered is something that has been appreciated and i think uh, it's it's only a testament for things to come i guess when you look at the hospitality sector in nepal especially post covid with so many hotels opening international brands coming in what do you see as the major challenges as a hotelier uh, for the hospitality industry is there too many rooms being supplied i think it is always this chicken and egg situation isn't it the question always arises okay do you what do you need first kind of thing yeah but coming back to the i think there is a little bit of oversupply when you look at uh, what the i wouldn't even say demand but what our capacity is if i may put it that way because i think uh, uh, we do as a as a nation rely on kathmandu airport, airport being the only primary uh, you know destination or the port of call for all oh. international tourists and given our capacity and you know you, i think there is a challenge in terms of you know growing that capacity so i think but there are i think works being done where i think the government and or bodies to be kind of are looking to expand the airport looking at facilitating you know other airports to have uh, international flights or you know regional flights so i think there is work in progress in those areas but again like you said yes i think there is a uh, some sort of a difference in terms of what is that demand and supply and i think we need to kind of look into plugging that gap and uh, like again i think it's also sometimes what is the solution sometimes the solution could also be out of the box kind of thinking you know in many ways uh you know we do have a very limited capacity so could we look at increasing our stay for instance for guests who come to nepal you know have programs which could be more than 7 or 10 days that could anyway increase spent uh, could we also look at road transportation for instance you know if you look at our neighboring countries i mean india has a very robust kind of a transportation system that is in place can we facilitate more land transportation for them to come to nepal and in in the process kind of you know increase our international tourists kind of coming in so i think uh, you know we could look at these so called tangents of ways of looking at just to give the examples of how we can maybe grow it and as a destination the other thing to increase the numbers would be more 
precise, well-managed marketing. Do you really think that as a destination, our marketing plans are coming together or is everyone doing what they want? And you know, there's, there's a lot of gray areas left. Well, I think with marketing, yes, I think uh, it's, it's very imperative that I think we do focus on data to start off with. I think that is where sometimes, you know, the foundation gets a little bit of uh, fluid. Uh, but yes, I think, uh, but again, at this flip side of it also, you know, there's so many uh, challenges that we as in Nepal face. And also one of our biggest constraints has always been resource constraints, you know. So do we have enough funds to kind of, you know, compete with the likes of Malaysia, Malaysia. Singapore, you know, who have massive amounts of budget to kind of reach out to that global scale or to that uh, marketing kind of aspect that is out there. But having said that, I think uh, we can always improve on it. I think, you know, we are taking those small steps where we are kind of identifying, uh, identifying our target markets. You know, uh, it might not be done uh, on, a on a big scale, but, you know, you have associations or various kind of uh, tourism related or, you know, travel related or hospitality related kind of uh, affiliates kind of reaching out to certain markets and, you know, doing the two bits to kind of, you know, make Nepal, uh, you know, it's, it's because it's all also about a brand recall, you know, because again, end of the day, we are competing on a global scale where, you know, we need to have that brand recall for every our destination to start off with. And then only should we as hotels or even as industry or travel agents can have the kind of a share of the pie. Also, when you look at domestic tourism, post COVID, yes, we have seen a significant rise in that. Is there more that we can do? Because I, I understand also Nepalese are spending a lot on outbound travel. The outbound sector has grown phenomenally. So do you think that the hospitality industry in Nepal can do more to attract locals, uh, domestic tourists to be? I think definitely. I think, you know, I think uh, post-COVID was the time when a lot of Nepalese realized Nepal as the destination was also a, you know, wow destination, you know, I mean, uh, you hear of jokes or even comments about how, you know, uh, people were going up to, you know, the, the Everest region where Nepal, Nepalese were really not the, you know, normal <laughs> guests and, you know, how that did sustain their economy when, you know, there was no tourist no. country. Uh, I mean, just to share an example, I do remember post-COVID, even when we were at the terraces, you know, we used to have uh, guests wanting to come with family, friends, and I think... One of the learnings from, from COVID was also that, you know, uh, let us also, you know, enjoy life while we can. And I think that also allows for, I think, domestic tourism to boom. And I think uh, uh, we do have so many products, uh, you know, as a nation that, you know, which is good for, you know, all seasons, yes, be it yes. summer, be it winters, be it even the monsoons down that, you know, it's it can be easily sold off. And then I think given the location that we are in i think you know driving or flying to these destinations yes. are very much within uh, the scope of the domestic market with the government announcing the visit nepal year 2020 unfortunately it was wiped out by the pandemic do you think it's time that perhaps instead of now again the government has declared tourism decade which is a very general thing do you feel that it's important perhaps that the government should declare a domestic tourism year to get Nepalese to first travel into Nepal, which could help the hospitality industry immensely in these challenging times? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, we do have, we do get uh, compartmentalized into, you know, kind of saying, okay, visit Nepal year, decade. But I think it's a process. You know, I think it's, uh, nothing can be done in one year or 10 years. I think it's, 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 it's it's a combination of things as you go along that you know we kind of have to cater to but i can like you said but having maybe a vision and a mission how we get there i think is more important than having like a year but like you said yes i think the domestic market is something that uh, is very much i think appreciated and also acknowledged now by the industry I mean, even if you look at some of the offers that are coming up now, if you look exactly. at, you know, monsoons offers or whatever, which is very much targeted towards the local market. So I think uh, there is a, and 
an understanding that you know the market is ready for us to uh, you know address and i think there is also a buying capacity that you know that people feel that yes you know we 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 can easily cater to the domestic market and i think uh, for us as a nation also it's a combination of domestic as well as international market because of course we as a nation do have a small kind of a uh, let's say a domestic market vis-a-vis even if you look at okay. compare it with our nation like you know neighbors yes. like china or india where you know there's such a big domestic market that some destinations don't even need any international uh, you know travelers talking about our two neighbors do you think that we are doing enough in terms of marketing and trying to at least tap because if we tap these two huge markets i think nepal will be in a very great situation well i think like i said coming back we are doing a small bits but it is all fragmented and you know it's kind of uh, so sometimes maybe uh, the efforts are not kind of bearing results uh, but again uh, you know i think these are all baby steps that are happening at the moment where uh, uh, you know we we are kind of looking at both markets and we all realize i think uh, in the industry i think these are our biggest markets and i think they cannot be ignored so but having said that you know it is also how do we market in terms of uh, vis-a-vis our less competing destinations i think you know post covid just to give an example you know beach destinations was the in thing mm-hmm. right i mean when you went to india and said no you come to the mountains and you know uh, you know but and we were competing with maybe uh, a thailand where they were saying the beaches you know so so i think it is also about understanding what is our kind of segmentation and where we can kind of look at because sometimes nepal as a destination we might not be a mass marketing destination and that is sure. where i think we have to kind of realize okay what are niche what are our kind of set clientele and like i was telling earlier it is all about getting the right data to kind of understand where should we target and how should we target given the limited resources we might have in terms of marketing budget in terms of connectivity because not mm-hmm. we are not really connected worldwide i mean even if you look at europe as a market i mean you know we don't really have direct connectivity to europe which could be a big market for us and it's, it's, it is still a, ch- a sizable chunk of our gas coming in how do you look at the chinese market especially in the last few days china has given a preferential uh, destination to nepal i believe they have given uh, free visas for nepalese to travel to china how is that changing the uh, the equation on the ground when, when we look at china as a market but china has always been i think uh, one of our top let's say top destinations i think pre covid also if you look at the numbers they were number 2 in terms Second, of total arrivals yes. into nepal as a, as a country so i think uh, china is there as a market which can easily support and given the population i think there is but of course i think currently we do have certain restrictions in terms of uh, capacity because you know not many flights, flights. come in um, recently i was in china along with a hand sales delegation that was there so you know to get to beijing we were having to go through chengdu for instance as an example so uh, if if i were a tourist from china if i had a direct flight would it make more sense given that you know some of the main cities are uh, what it is uh, to add to that also i think uh, china as a destination is something where you know uh, language can be a problem so you know we do rely on a lot of uh, support from maybe um, the tour operators be it in nepal or in china where you know there is a little bit of uh, you know, translation that we, we don't lose any uh, uh, you know uh, information to translation or something and that's where i think uh, you know we have to kind of because it's a different market you know you, like you i think we did discuss about it also long time back, back yes. how you know uh, the language you know even having your brochures in chinese is more important than just you know, and not only yes. brochures they probably won't take your brochures they exactly. are all on that on wechat you know it's uh, so you know i don't know uh, everybody was asking for my wechat uh, id so you Scanning. know that's how it is so yes it it is a different market to maybe what uh, we are used to but i think end of the day uh, i think we have to be adaptable uh, to you know what the the market or the customer wants as well and i think it is about understanding those nuances where you know uh, where we make them feel that yeah you're welcome and i think that's all boils down to
And as a final question, Suman, on the favorite topic, human resource, the hospitality industry is facing a crunch. I mean, most of the tourism, other sectors also probably, but more so in the hospitality. How do you see the situation and what would you suggest we should be doing to overcome this? Well, I think uh, that's a million dollar or even a billion dollar question that everybody is asking. Isn't it? But yes, we do have a constraint. And of course, a lot of our constraints are because or challenges are because, yes, number one, you know, there is a brain drain that is happening. And of course, a uh, lot of our you know, education or let's say hospitality kind of uh, institutes or, you know, uh, areas of learning has always been more focused on training them to go abroad. And go abroad. You know, you're being trained to say, okay, uh, we will have internships for you in XYZ country and, you know, you would do a six months here and that. So, yes, so it all, I think, goes down to the fundamentals as well and kind of addressing that issue and saying, okay, let us again analyze what's our kind of resource requirement because again in the past like you said you know we had a lot of hotels but it was not very it was fragmented right. as well uh, i mean just to share with you also i think handy is also looking at how we can maybe you know prioritize and say okay look human resources is one of our you know challenges moving ahead given the number of keys that are opening up given the number of international chains or hotels that are in the pipeline how do we kind of address this issue and, and, and that's a i think a positive uh, kind of step towards that direction not everything would uh, come immediately because of course i think when you look at our be it our financial kind of uh, you know uh, let's say pay scales to even uh, a level of expertise that might be able to offer here locally versus maybe yeah. a dubai or a, a different uh, country there is going to be a difference where you know we uh, i guess students or uh, people wanting to join the hospitality industry would definitely look that uh, prefer that destination but having said that you know we do see a lot of uh, you know people coming back you know like you i mean like i said yes i mean i really wasn't in the industry but i did and but People who have said, okay, they have worked in Dubai or any of the, you know, Middle Eastern countries and they've been in the industry for a while. They've been there for five, six years and they want to come back because, you know, you have, you know, family here or, you know, you have certain constraints. Uh, I would say, you know. And is there a demand for such people who, this is the reverse brain yes, drain. Yes, now they are, they are yes, trained. Of course, why not? I think there is, there is. And I think, uh, I think there is also scope for them to kind of. Uh, you know, reintegrate into, uh, you know, what the market is all about. And of course, in the process, get that expertise here as well. And I think, uh, I think that's a positive in terms of, you know, how we could move ahead and kind of also attract them back to say, you know, yes, now, yes, we might not be able to pay you as much as what they pay in Dubai. But, you know, you have a quality of life where, you know, you family, have family home, you have country. home, you have, you know, at least the, uh, you know, the, the feeling that, you know, you could go out with friends and, you know, I think that bonding is there. I think so. I think we could definitely use that as a advantage to uh, kind of at least attract them back. Thank you so much, Suman, for taking the time out and coming to meet us. No, no, no. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you and so thank much. Thank you for having me and uh, all the best with you. All the best.